Welcome, my name is Brian McLogan. I am a current high school math teacher and I also make online math tutorials on YouTube. I wanted to kind of go over three of the top 10 mistakes that I see math learners make. And the number one is focusing on the grade. Now, I will give you a couple examples of what exactly I mean by focusing on the grade. Basically, focusing on the grade basically means is focusing on the grade and with regardless of really understanding the material or understanding what's going on in the class. Um, first of all, I'll be, I'll do my own example. You know, through high school, I didn't really care about math, didn't really care about learning. So all I really cared about was getting a good grade so I can move on to the, you know, next level or whatever else I wanted to do. Because, um, you know, again, I didn't really see much relevance in math at all. And unfortunately, though, I decided I wanted to become a math teacher sometime in my life very shortly after high school. And I had to go back and even take before I even started my program, I had to, you know, I took pre-calculus, but I had to go back into an algebra class just to kind of build up on those skills because I never learned about them because I never really cared about them. I only just cared about the grade. And, you know, the thing is, is sometimes that even is brought up to, you know, with your teachers and so forth. You're just kind of focusing on just learn this process. Just do this, do this, and then get the grade. And the problem with that is, you know, not only in mathematics as things build, you know, we've seen people that have gone through, especially as a teacher, I've seen people that have gone through the whole school system. You know, they come to me as an 11th grader or 12th grader and they don't remember um, any of the skills that they had previously learned because they're only just focused on getting the grade, not really learning what they uh, needed to learn. And unfortunately for our, you know, some people that have been taught that that's not really what the purpose of mathematics is for. It's not, we're not teaching you the, to learn mathematics just to do some process and some skills and then go ahead and get a good grade and move on to the next course. So the, really the main important thing that I think is as somebody's moving through you know, mathematics curriculum, especially and again, it's not always you know, the student's fault because sometimes us as teachers um, and even parents perpetuate students just to focus on the grade and not really focus on the learning. So by tilting, by flipping that over, by really making sure you focus on the learning and your understanding, that's gonna give you that foundation that as you work up, it's um, not only are you gonna be more successful in your math classes, but things are gonna make more sense as are, is once we start connecting things and applying them to a little bit more of an understanding of why mathematics is useful in the real world life or in, a, in multiple uh, applications. Step number two, putting in the extra effort. And I say extra effort because for a lot of students, you know, what has just been asked of them in the mathematics class is not enough. And a lot of people want to look at um, a look at those kids that math comes easy to, right? You know, it's like, oh, here's a homework, or they don't even take notes, and they just get a homework, they get an A, and, you know, life is jolly. They understand mathematics very well. And a lot of students just want to kind of emulate that because they see, well, if this person do it, they're so smart in mathematics, that's, I'm smart, so that's the way, you know, I should do it. But we've got to understand mathematics comes to different, um, comes, comes to us at different paces. And there's a big problem with comparing how you're understanding mathematics compared to how anybody else in your class is comparing mathematics. Mathematics is a skill, and it's a language. And that's only gonna come from the putting in practice. And sometimes we need to practice a little bit more than we need than the next person. And that is true for learning an instrument, in sports, learning a language. You just can't you know, read or study or something like that and then obviously immen you know, immerse yourself into a different culture or into a different sport. It takes practice, a lot of practice. You know, one of the things I always laugh about is students are like, well, you're so good at math. Well, you know, I remind them, hey, you know, I wasn't that good at math. I had to go back and relearn a lot of the skills. I didn't get great, great grades when I was in high school. But the thing is, you know, you think, all right, well, I did my 12 years just like you guys are trying to do. And then I did another 12 years to get my mathematics degree in university. And I've done a lot of practice and now I've been teaching for 10 years. So just imagine the number of math problems that I've done. I have a lot of practice. So mathematics, when I'm teaching, it can seem like it's coming easy to me, but it has comes from a lot of practice. So I think a lot of people, they want, you know, we're humans. We want something for, you know, especially in a lot of our society, we want things done quickly. We want them fast with the least amount of effort, um, you know, possible. So I really want you to understand though, to really make sure that you're understanding math to be able to get the best grade and to be able to move on and to successively understand what mathematics you're doing, you gotta make sure you're putting in the effort. It's a practice, it's a language, it's a skill. Just like any other skill or language that you learn, it takes practice. And sometimes you gotta put in a little bit more practice than the person next to you to get to where you wanna be. And the last thing. Holly Tanyan, please report to the main office. Holly Tanyan, report to the main office. 
is ask your teacher. Uh, you know, as a mathematics teacher, there's nothing I want more than to help students that, um, to help my student, well, basically just to help my students out. But the thing that, you know, I'm even more willing to bend over brackets are those students that, you know, they're trying, they're putting in all this extra effort and they're just not getting it, but they want, they have that willing to succeed. And, you know, even though I, I'm trying to help all of my students, I will have to be biased that when students are putting in those extra efforts to really make sure that they can understand and do everything, I have a feeling that I, I'm that reciprocation property. I can see they're putting in all this extra effort into to do well in my class. I want to make sure I can put in any extra effort back, you know, into them to make sure I can help them as well. And, you know, as a teacher, I got to be careful um, because I understand when I was a student, you know, I would look for patterns in the teachers. What are they saying? How, how should I know what to expect on the test? Or how, are my, how can I do better in the grading system? Because as humans, well, we follow along with patterns. We like things the way they get done, and we like to consistently kind of do that. And I kind of need to remember that because I remember in high school and even in college, I'd try to look for what are the consistencies of the teacher that I can kind of find that, can, that I can play to my advantage. And I think as you know, teachers, there's some of them that I unconsciously do that I probably don't want you know, my students to do that they could take advantage of, but there's also ones that I um, consciously give out to my students saying, hey, here's your roadmap to success. Follow this roadmap to success and I guarantee that you will be successful in my class. And a lot of teachers do the same thing. So as far as ask your teacher, you know, one of the things that I, I still remember asked the question when I first got into calculus because I was really kind of worried that I wouldn't do well in the calculus class and I asked the teacher, what is it going to take for me to be successful? And he was more than willing. He bent over backwards showing me exactly what I needed to do. And guess what? I followed his formula and I did perfectly fine. And even when I took higher, you know, upper level math classes where I started to get concerned, you know, I went to the teacher and say, you know, I'm having trouble. What can I do to get better in this class? What are some things that I can, you know, focus on? And I'm telling you, as a teacher, when, when students come up to me and they show me that they are that much interested in making sure they understand material, I am going to be just as much interested as far as going above and beyond to make sure that I can, you know, help them out. So asking your teacher falls along with, you know, looking for the pattern. What, are the thing, what is the roadmap that they're giving you? And if they're not giving it to you, go up and ask them. What is it that I can do to be more successful? Because you know what? As teachers, regardless of just tests, but by questioning and by walking around with our, our classrooms, we know where most of our students are going to stand and what they can do to be more successful. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Those were kind of the top three mistakes that I see a lot of math learners, uh, math learners make. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any other questions or additional suggestions. Thanks.